What's next? 2015. For some of you, it was a phenomenal year. For some of you, you'd probably say, I wish I could push the delete button and get it over with. But 2016 opens up new opportunities. It opens up new dreams. But before you can open up those dreams, before you can look at what tomorrow could be, I think there's some things that we must do. And some of the things that we must do is the first things we must be self-aware. We must know what we don't know. We must be totally aware of where I am. You know, if somebody would call you and ask you for directions, how do I get to your house? What is the first thing that you have to ask them? Yeah. Where are you? I mean, if I don't know where you are, I can't tell you how to get to where I am. And I believe sometimes we want to go where God wants us to go, but we're not willing to tell him where I am because we are sticking our head in the sand. And sometimes when we open up our eyes and sometimes when we realize, you know what, I've been doing this over and over and over for so many years. I need a fresh start. And God is saying here at the very early ages of 2016, let us do some tweaking. Let us understand where we are. And where does God want to take us? Where does God truly want to take us for the upcoming years, months of our lives? You know, with some great anticipation, we have things taking place within our lives, and, and we're looking forward to some events in the future, but sometimes we feel like our life is a very mundane event. We get up, we go to work, we get up, we go to school, we go to bed. It just seems like it's so mundane. But sometimes, have you ever been to an amusement park? Don't you love amusement parks? I love roller coasters. Okay, so you go into an amusement park, and, and uh, back, back in the day, I was a youth pastor, and we were at Ramser Baptist Church in Paris, Texas, and we had this big old Greyhound bus. And I had to drive this Greyhound bus from Paris, Texas to Arlington, Texas, and we had this youth event called MTV. And that was back in the 80s. Remember, remember MTV? Now you're telling your age. But it's, we had MTV, and we called it Metroplex Teen Vision. All the churches got together, and we rented out the amusement park, and we had all kinds of fun, all kinds of kids coming. I didn't know half the kids that were on the bus, and, and we got into the park, and we got to the first place to say, okay, guys, we're, we have our event that's taking place like at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and, and this is where we're going to meet back. So we met right at the place, and I said, I went to the sign, and in the sign had a red X, and the red X said what? You are here. The entire park, you could say, I want to ride Batman or Mr. Freeze or whatever you want to ride, but if you do not know where you are, you cannot get to where you want to go. You can walk around that park all day long, but you have to know where you are. Now, honestly, back in my age, these young punks, they could care less. They would run from the time they got into the park, they'd run to Mr. Freeze, they'd run all the way across the park. And us, you know, older guys, we would plot our course. <laughs> okay, I do this. I don't have to do that one first because I can, I can walk around the park and I can make all my stops, but I have to know where I am and where I want to go. Funny thing about that little event was, um, you know all those kids that are on the bus that I didn't know? We were supposed to be back at the church on a Saturday night at midnight. Midnight. Two hours away. Pre-cell phone days. We were supposed to meet at the entrance, at the red sign, at 10 o'clock. We all got there except for two kids that signed the ledger. I knew their names. I had no idea who they were. At 12 o'clock, we had 80-some kids on the bus, minus two. And I was nervous, mad, upset. And I'm, I should not tell this story. And I was frustrated. And in that Greyhound bus, they have a little door where the driver can pay the tolls. And some little kid that was not with us stuck one of those machine gun water guns in that hole and released that water, drenched me. 
Now, I was mad here. I was elevated way up to here. But I got over it. I got over it. I did some things I shouldn't have done. I probably lost my temper, but that's, that's probably all right. Sometimes we have to know where we are to get to where we want to go. And sometimes that red dot or that red X says, you are here. This is our X. You maybe don't want to admit that this is where you are. You may not even like that you are here. But until we admit we are here, we are never going to be able to go there. So today's message is, where are we? Where are you in your life? The first thing I want to tell you, we are here for a reason. You are where you are for a reason. You may not like where you are, but you can point at the things and the situations and the circumstances in your life and you say, I made my choices and I am here for a reason. In our present circumstances, in our current location, in our relationships, and in our jobs. We are here because of stuff. Doesn't mean that we have to stay where we are. But what it does mean is we have to admit where we are so we can go where he wants us to go. And I like what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. You know, everybody says this, and we know that all things work out for good. Well, you know what? It doesn't always work out for good. It says this, and we know that all things work out for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So everything can work out well, and it can work out good. But the credentials would be we have to have a passion and a love for God, and we have to know what he wants, and we have to accomplish that goal. And when we do that, God can provide a plan for our life. You may think this mundane life that you're in, that nothing happens. Every once in a while, something big may take place. But I have news for you. Every day is planned by God. Every time you eat dinner with your family, every time you play catch with your child, every time that you do something important, it is not mundane. It's impactful. And until we get the mindset that God has put me into my life and he has put people in my life and situations in my life that I think is mundane, we are going to lose what God has given to us as a vision and a dream for our future. God has you where you are for a reason. Every moment matters. Every day doesn't have to be exciting, but every day has to be eventful. We have to know exactly what is taking place. If you had to examine today your interaction with your spouse, your partner, kids, co-workers, or friends, or even your job, your relationship with God, how would you describe you're here? You're here right now. Would you say, I'm content? I'm happy? Would you say, I'm frustrated? Nervous? Anxious? Maybe even impatient? Sometimes we want so much for Christmas to get over. We want school to get over. We want something to happen that's a month down the road. So we're so anxious about something to take place. We get so impatient for the here and now. And every day needs to be something that's wonderful. Every day can be an opportunity for us to dream big dreams and do great things. You know, the Apostle Peter, before he met Jesus... There is an illustration found in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, where the moment that Peter met Jesus changed his life. I want to read that to you. In Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. So it was, as the multitudes passed by him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. Then he got into the boat, and which was Simon's, and asked him to put it out a little water from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night 
and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down your net. Here's the situation. What was Peter's occupation? He was a fisherman. Did Peter end his occupation as a fisherman? At that moment, at that moment, his life changed. And sometimes when we come into an encounter and we see Jesus and Jesus says, I want to launch out into the deep. I want you to try new things. I want you to do new things. Launch out into the deep. Sometimes we have to trust God that I am not in shallow water anymore. That I know if I capsize, I can stand up because the water's only three inches deep. I can survive that. But sometimes he wants us to launch out into the deep. And if you cast out of that boat, you're going to sink. So what we do by nature is we stay by the shore. Because I know where here is. I know I can stand up. Peter's not always going to be a fisherman. At that moment, the biggest encounter of Peter's life was he met Jesus and Jesus changed the direction of his life. And there's points in our life when we come to the face-to-face -face with Jesus and Jesus says, I know where you are, but that's not where you're going to go. We can say, wow, what a journey that's going to be. How awesome that experience will be. So we have to know where we are. But perspective is the cure for impatience. Perspective is the cure for impatience. Most people are dissatisfied with their here. We want to know what's next. We are just flat out impatient. Disciples were impatient with Jesus. Even the day that he was, he was almost ready to be crucified, they, they were so impatient they fell asleep. They were so impatient. They were asking Jesus to do great things. And Jesus was always, always, always communicating. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. I want you to do what you're going to do. You're going to change the world. But don't get so unfocused. Don't do everything you want to do. Follow after well, me what I have accomplished for you. Some of us would flat out don't want to be here. Where you are right now. In your life. You just say in your heart, I don't want this. I don't want to be here. I don't like my life. I don't like where I'm at. I don't like the circumstances that got me here. And I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. But I don't like here. I don't like my ex in spot. I don't want anybody to say this is where I'm at because I am not happy with where I'm at. Sometimes we can look at that and say, you know what? We have to be patient, and we have to have a perspective of our impatience. Now, King David had, a, had an awesome verse found in Psalms chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me out of a horrible pit and out of my miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. If you remember the story of King David, you remember that he was not always the man king. He was anointed a boy. He was anointed a 13, 14 year old boy as the next king of Israel by the, the uh, prophet Samuel. And he had to wait 14 to 15 to 20 years before he ever got to be the king. He waited patiently. He had opportunities after opportunities when Saul started losing his mind to kill Saul and to put himself as king. But he would not do what man asked him to do. He always did what God had asked him to do. And when Samuel anointed David the king, when he was 13 years of old, God said, listen, guys, listen, you look at the outward appearance of man. You look at what he looks like, the size, his gray hair. You look at things. God does not look at the appearance of man. God looks at the heart, the deeper issues of life. Just because somebody says something or somebody does something doesn't mean that they're the God man. It doesn't mean that they're doing what God wants them to do. God looks deeper than the outward appearance and what people say and do. God wants to look deep into the heart, deep into your life. 
David, when he was a man, he had the opportunity to kill Saul and take the kingship. But he patiently waited on God. Even when you're having hard times and you don't want to be where you are, God is here. God is here at where you are. And he's working out a solution before you even knew that there was a problem. But we have to stick our head out of the sand and say, I need to know where I am. I need to be able to look and see what I need to do, find where God is, and understand that God has a solution for me. I may not understand it. I may not like it. I have no idea how to get out of it. But this day, I am here for a reason. I may have to change in order to change the direction. But I guarantee you, if I continue to do what I've always done, I'm always going to be here. I'm always going to stick my head in the sand. I'm always going to be wanting to get out. I'm always going to be impatient for God's moving into my life. We have to have perspective. We have to know. And then what happens here prepares us for what's next. We know we did things to get here, but what I do here is going to change where I go. And if we want a positive outcome of where I am going, we have to know what we're doing. We have to understand my life. We have to understand our heart. We have to understand what is taking place. Impatience will cause us to miss what God has taught, what God is teaching us. He never wastes circumstances. Or let me put it this way. God never wastes your pain. Let that sink in. Your hurts, your disappointments, your failures. God never wastes an opportunity to grow you. We have to look at that. We have to be self-aware of that. I wish God would just give us the magic pill and every job would be wonderful, every family would be perfect, and every relationship is awesome. But we are where we are because of a problem. And if we don't fix where we are in this problem, where we're going is to go into another problem. For those who love God and according to his will, he can work everything out. But we have to have a passion for God. And how we know we have a passion for God is to look at his word, look at his direction, and follow his will. When we do that, we understand that where we are now, and as long as we do what God wants us to do today, where God wants to take us can be phenomenal. It tells me the story in the Bible of Joseph. Joseph is a beautiful story in the Bible. His brothers were jealous of him and sold him into slavery. In that slavery, he went to a guy's house by the name of Potiphar, and Potiphar was a very wealthy man. And Potiphar respected him, loved him, and honored him, and gave him complete control over the house. But Potiphar's wife came on to him. He rejected Potiphar's wife and he ran. Potiphar's wife told Potiphar that he raped her and Potiphar put him into prison. Put him into prison. Do you think Joseph wanted to be in prison? Do you think Joseph liked his here? He didn't like his here. He was in there for years. He was in there for years and all of a sudden there was a dream and Joseph said, I can interpret that dream. And the dream was there's going to be a famine in the land. There's going to be abundance in the land. The king brought Joseph out of the prison. And Joseph interpreted that dream. And the king put Joseph in charge of everything in Egypt under his command. Under his command. The famine did take place after seven years. And in that famine, countries were dying. People were starving to death. And now the caravan was coming to Egypt so they could have grain. And in that caravan was Joseph's brothers that years before cast him into a pit and sold him into slavery. Joseph, realizing who they were, he thought something would take place. But he said this, to his brothers. But you, as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as of this day to save many people. 
alive. There's times in our lives where we think we are doing something that's bad. We think that somebody has hurt us. We have no idea what's going on. And so what we do is we think something has hurt us. But God, just like what Joseph said, you meant it for evil. But God turned your evil into good. And I can look back in the middle of my life and I can say, look at the circumstance. Look what I'm going through. Look at poor me. I'm in the midst of this relationship. I'm in the midst of the prison. I don't know what to do. And we're down there. We're saying, why me? Why do I have to go through all this? But when you get out of that circumstance and you go back after a few years and now God has you in control. God has your future survived. You can look back and say, you know what? People meant it for evil. But God knew where I was. He knew where my ex was in life and his protection was on me and he had a plan for me. His brothers, they meant it for evil. But God, his hand of protection was on him and his future was awesome. God prepares us where we are for what is before us tomorrow. But if we're not willing to look at where I am, if we're not willing to learn from where I am, we may not have a future of tomorrow because we're not willing to move from here. We have to move from here. We can't stay here. In every one of our lives, we have to say, what do I need to do? I'm not perfect. My satisfaction is not great. I need to be patient enough to understand that God is working in my circumstances here, but I have to be willing to say I want to open my heart, and if he wants to move me to tomorrow, I can do that as well. We have to be willing to do that. Joseph had the perspective that God was in charge. What can happen? What can happen when we do lose our perspective, though? What happens when we lose our perspective? What happens when we lose our dreams? When we take the Bible and we feel like it's a desert time and, and we know we have faith in God and we know that God loves us, but something is just not happening and I lose my dreams, I lose my future, I lose God's protection on my head, not because he has lost me, but sometimes I started being impatient and I started doing the things that I wanted to do instead of doing the things that God wanted me to do. I know that God loves me and I know that God wants to take care of me. I know that God's not going to waste any pain within my life. But sometimes we get tired of waiting. And when we get tired of waiting, we lose our perspective of what God truly wants to do within our life. And there's not a greater story than this than Abraham. Abraham and Sarah. God promised Abraham a son. Abraham had to wait 24 years. I get impatient at a stoplight. I get impatient at, at, at the toll booth. I get impatient at Dylan's because I picked the wrong stinking line. <laughs> oh, I should have went over there. Impatience. Abraham was told by God that you and Sarah will have a son. He was confident in that. But he got ahead of God. And he took Sarah's handmaiden and had a baby. And his name was Ishmael. Ishmael was 14 years of age when Isaac was born. Abraham had to banish the handmaiden and Ishmael. There's a big riff. God told Abraham, I'm going to give you a son with Sarah, and your descendants will be as many as the sea sand. But Abraham waited. He waited. He waited. But he lost his perspective. 
Maybe God just wanted me to have the son. Maybe I could do what I want to do. God, God won't care if Sarah's involved. Maybe I can sin and still have God's hand. Sometimes we understand what God wants. We get tired of what God says. Or God is not fast enough. He doesn't move well enough. So we say, okay, God, I'm going to take part truth. And I'm going to add everything I want. And I just expect you to bless me because you told me something. And sometimes we have to listen to God. We have to not lose perspective. Because you know what? When we lose perspective and we sin outside of God's will, it causes chaos. Anybody have any chaos in their life? Everybody's got chaos, right? Why don't we understand what the chaos is? The chaos, what we have to do is, what does God want? What has God done? I need God to understand, have me understand this is where I am. Give me patience and give me a perspective. Where am I? What am I going to do? We need to be self-aware of our here so we can allow God to move us to our there. And in our here, right here, my life, what is it in my life that took me to here? Let's look at my life. Let's look at the circumstances. Let's look at the sin. Let's look at the blessing. Let's call it what it is and say, I need to fix my here so I can have a there. But if I am not willing to fix my here, I'm going to stay here for a long time. And if we're not happy where we are here today, we can very well be here January 2017. It's very simple. What we must do is understand we can't get ahead of God. I cannot be impatient. I am here for a reason. God does not waste my circumstances, and he does not waste my hurts. He molds me and makes me into somebody that he wants me to be. But here's what I have to do in doing that. I have to admit where I was. I have to ask God to forgive me for what I did. And I have to be open to Dad and say, Dad, will you fix me for who you want me to be? Then I can be on the path for there. I had this good visit this week. I went up to the hospital and I visited a man that, uh, that has cancer. He used to go to church here many years ago and he moved off to another town and he calls me up and he he asked me to come by and he said, he said, Bruce, I just need to talk to you. So, great. So I went up the first time and a uh, bunch of family in there. And uh, I, he caught my eye and I said, I said I'll, why don't I come back tomorrow? I'll come back tomorrow and we'll just, we'll just have a talk. And he just nodded his head. So I went back in and there was a couple family members there the next day. And I said, hey guys, um, do you mind going down for some coffee? We just want to talk a little bit. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. So I pulled up my chair beside him. And he started telling me about his life. All the junk in his life. And he said, I don't know if God can forgive me. And I said, you don't know the God that I know. And I said, you know what? You don't have to confess your sins to me. You could tell me everything you want to tell me, and it isn't going to change your circumstance at all. But you know what? I can point you to a man by the name of Jesus that will change you and forgive you. We went through this long conversation, <laughs> and I said, you know what? You need to forgive your past. You need to let God forgive you. You need to embrace his forgiveness and his salvation. And you have no idea what tomorrow has in store. But let me guarantee you one thing. Tomorrow is positive. Yesterday has been forgiven. Every sin, every thought, everything that you've ever done is under the blood of Jesus because Jesus 
is your Lord. We can forget yesterday. We can forget why we are here. As long as here is where God wants us to be. I am forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. I know that I'm going to heaven. I know my past is behind me. I am forgiven because of Jesus. And now he's given me a future that's secure in heaven. I can take my here and have a wonderful there. I have to make that decision. I can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. We need to be motivated to be self-aware of saying, I am not satisfied to stay where I am. The chaos that I cause need to be forgiven. God loves me. I want a tomorrow. I want a future in the hands of God. Because the scripture said, and we know that all things work together for good to those who, what? Love God. And to those who are called according to His purpose. We need to love God. We need to do what He wants us to do. His purpose, His plan. And today, oh, get our head out of that sand. I love you, Lord. I want you to give me direction. His plan. Not my will. Your will, Lord. And we love God more than we love ourselves. When his plans are bigger than my plans, we can say Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. You want a future? You want a positive future? Love God. Follow his will. See what God can do for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, as we open up this year, I pray that our hearts will be one that's set on fire. I pray that our dreams, our visions, our goals will be one that's set into your will. Our personal lives, our spiritual lives, I pray so much, Lord, that you will take us right here where we are. Forgive us where we have failed you. Take us where you want us to go. Let us love you more than anything else. Let us honor you and let us do your will. And we know that when we love you and we're doing what you've asked us to do, you will work all things out for good. We need that. We desire that. We ask you for that. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Pastor Al.